Um, I've served on the board of several nutritional companies and I consult with many practitioners to support their clients and patients. And my goal is to help people create and maintain a healthy lifestyle. So I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about genetics. So I'm gonna start by talking about the basics and some reminders for many of you, I'm sure. Um, and then we're gonna get into more of how we can affect the expression of genes and some of the specifics related to that and then some of the things we have control over to affect those expressions. So first the genetic code which is the sequence of nucleotides in DNA and RNA um, in, in those molecules that determine the amino acid sequence in the synthesis of proteins. Uh, so that's a mouthful. Really genes encode proteins and proteins are what are going to dictate the cell function. And so thousands of genes expressed in a particular cell are going to determine what that cell can actually do. Um, so each step in the flow of information from DNA to RNA to protein actually provides that cell with a potential control point. Now this is significant information in regard to this talk because it's really all about are there points in this genetic code that can be affected? Um, so it provides a cell with a potential control point for self-regulating its functions and by adjusting the amount of proteins that it actually manufactures. So at any given time, the amount of particular protein in the cell is going to reflect the balance between the points of synthetic and degradative biochemical pathways. So on the, in, on the synthetic side of this balance, recall that protein production starts at transcription, which is DNA to RNA, and that it will continue to translation, which is RNA to protein. So control of these particular processes plays really a critical role in determining what proteins are present in the cell and in what amounts. So that's where some of what can be affected in our genes takes place. Also, the way in which a cell processes its RNA and newly made proteins also greatly influences that protein level. So what are some of the diseases that we're familiar with that Cancer. relate to genetics? Cancer, diabetes, diabetes Cancer. Heart, right? heart diseases. There's congenital diseases, diseases that occur at birth or that are present at birth or hereditary diseases, diseases that are derived from one's parents and transmitted in the gametes through the generations. And then there's mutations. Now even though there's permanent changes in the D DNA with some mutations in those somatic cells, they're not necessarily transferred to the progeny but are important in the causation of something like cancer um, or other congenital diseases. So what are the causes of some of these mu mutations? Anybody know? Toxins. Toxins. Diet. Virus. Diet. Viruses. Stress. Stress. All these things. Chemicals. Radiation. As we said, virus. Chemotherapy. Bacteria. Yes. Could, could turn into a toxin. Yes, absolutely. So also, we want to talk about some specific effects. Single gene effects, for instance, that affect the nervous system. Something like Huntington's disease. <coughs> A uh, single, single gene defect that affects the urinary system can be a polycystic kidney. Um, gastrointestinal issues, we know about that. Disorders with multifactorial uh, factorial inheritance. Cytogenic disorders, disorders that show atypical patterns of inheritance. There's all these disorders. Um, one of them that's kind of not so common or heard of is something called Ehlers-Danlos. Does anybody know what that is? That is a defect in the collagen synthesis. So the person would have uh, symptoms like fragile or hyperextensible skin, um, hypermobile joints, rupture of the large arteries, poor wound healing, those types of things. What was that called? Eller Danlos. Eller? Eller Danlos. E H L E R D A N L O S. Thank you. Um, so that's one of them. One that we all know is cholesterol issues, mm -hmm. hypercholesterolemia. And one of the most common disorders is 
is this one, and it involves the mutation of the LDL receptor gene where it is impaired uh, with the transport into the cells. And then you can have things like atherosclerosis, hardening of the arteries, plaquing in the arteries, coronary artery disease, which we mentioned. So this is very important, uh, this part. Disorders with polygenic inheritance, multifactorial inheritance, governed, governed by the effect of two or more genes of small effect, but they're conditioned by the environment. So this is where we pay attention because it's conditioned by the environment and by non-genetic influences. So what are some of these things that manifest? The disorder manifests when a certain effector gene, as well as conditioning, environmental influences, very important, are involved. And some of the common ones are ones we've already mentioned, diabetes, hypertension, gout, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, congenital heart disease, neural tube defects, coronary artery disease. Can I just ask a question? Because if you go further, I'm going to lose it. Okay. Um, are you saying that even though normally this wouldn't cause a problem, if there's a problem like, you know, eating certain things like coconut oil, which is supposed to be a good fat and things like that, if you have this congenital defect, it won't be good for you anymore? Well, I'm not saying any specific thing, but I'm saying there are outside factors. The key point to remember, because this talk is about our genes and whether or not they're going to express themselves and what factors contribute to that expression negatively and what factors can contribute to the lack of that expression negatively. So particularly coconut oil, we'll have to get into some more specifics, but but more, think more in terms of environmental factors and stress, all the things we mentioned that it can affect whether those genes are going to express themselves. So just okay. the negative stuff would be affecting it. The negative stuff and the positive stuff on the flip side of it can affect whether or not they express themselves and how they express themselves. So how is gene expression regulated? Let's talk about messenger RNA, the amounts and types of messenger RNA which are molecules in a cell that reflect the function of that cell. Thousands of transcripts are produced every second in every cell. So with that statistic, it's not surprising that the primary control point for gene expression is usually at the very beginning of the protein production process. And the, that's the initiation of transcription. So. RNA transcription makes an efficient control point because many proteins can be made from a single messenger RNA molecule. So now we're, we're thinking in terms of where can this affect of the things we do or don't do uh, have the greatest effect. If we can affect it at that messenger RNA level, then we're gonna have a great effect on the body. So let's talk about micro RNA. This is getting to that point, that micro RNA. It's a small non-coding RNA molecule which is found in plants and animals and viruses. <clears throat> so it functions in RNA, silencing in silencing and post transcription regulation of gene expression. It has an effect on gene expression. Everybody following me so far? Kind of. <laughs> um, so what if you could alter or get to that point and affect the microRNA? What could happen to the cells? What if we could alter it so, so that expression of proteins are better and healthier and healthier? Would that be a good thing? Mm -hmm. So let me talk a little bit.